The Quocast, a status quo fan podcast. This is Jamie Dyer welcoming you to another edition of The Quocast. And it's a slightly um, rushed effort this week. I wasn't able to get um, a message out on social media to ask about um, what I'm about to talk about. But I'm sure afterwards there will be lots of discussion stimulated. So I um, said when I started this podcast that I didn't just want to cover kind of the glory years. I wanted to cover all of it everything because let's be honest quo is a very wide area and there's lots of different sections and certainly there are some choices that they've made down the years which maybe weren't the greatest um, retrospectively as in they've dated not terribly but just don't sound quite as fresh as they were intended to sound back there. And I know that some of the stuff that they did in the period I'm going to be talking about, they've since said it was awful. I personally think that some of it is not awful. It's just different from what we know Quo to be. And, well, what can I say? But I was thinking, and... and I, I do this quite a lot with this podcast. I just think of a subject to talk about and I go with it. So I'm sorry if this doesn't feel like it's thought out for a long period. It's not. It's literally just off the top of my head, really. But I wondered, what is the most 80s Quo song out there? Um, as in, which song is the song that really pandered to every trend fad going at that particular moment in time which one is it now i i would argue personally that it's their 1988 album ain't complaining that has most of these um i I don't want to say offenders because uh, to me they're great songs they're they're wonderful and as they've said about later material perhaps not quite right for quo but they have the most 80s sounding tracks. I mean, In the Army Now was basically a compilation of tracks that had been written before and kind of, you know, compiled for this release with new recordings, with the new lineup. And it's it's interesting. You know, there's some experimental stuff. There's a little bit more of Andrew Bowen and the keyboards in there. But really, it's the next album with Ain't Complaining, including its title track, where they really play with technology. And it starts to get away from that traditional boogie sound that they were known for and more into kind of 80s pop music. And there are a few tracks, as I say, that could be classed as incredibly 80s. I'll only mention a few of them here. Uh, The first one that comes to mind uh, is obviously Ain't Complaining with the left-right bit at the beginning and just those gated drums and the way they've kind of... It reminds me a little bit, and uh, there must be some Shaking Stevens fans here. Uh, He did a track in the late 80s called Love Attack, and I think that was produced by Pete Waterman. And... The way that they managed to combine kind of Jake and Stevens' mix of rockabilly, rock and roll with kind of the sound of the day is what I think they're going for with Ain't Complaining, the song. It kind of feels like that. Some of the rhythms are very familiar. They're things that, that Quo have been doing for all these years. And then you've got the gated drums. You've got kind of the way that it's produced. And... I think it's it's a great record. It's very 80s, but it's still a great record, as is Every Time I Think of You, which for me is a lost single. Um, that really should have been a single because the way that Andy's um, synthesizer just completely m- takes everything to another level. And I think it's something that might have connected to... The, the audience that weren't Quo fans, but maybe it might have taken them in another direction that the fans weren't entirely happy with, and even the band to that end. And really, um, aside from uh, a couple of tracks I can mention, like The Loving Game and Who Gets the Love, which is a typical 80s ballad, I think for this one, aside from One for the Money, of course, 
the most 80s track on the Ain't Complaining album has to be Another Shipwreck, doesn't it? Anybody that knows the disco-infused um, version of Andy Bowen recorded in the late 70s. And it, it is interesting. It's an interesting thing. It's very disco. It's very of its era. And then Quo come in with this mix of guitars and keyboards and i think it would have worked wonderfully about two or three years before if they had come out with that in in about 85 86 around the time of back to the future and all that stuff they could have had a massive hit on their hands and i know a lot of people are a little bit you know dubious of it because there's so many keyboards in it so much production but it's just so 80s and it's so catchy as well and i love the way that at the end they turn the first verse into a beautiful throwback at the end with just everything thrown together and again andy synthesizers making it just a wonderful pop record that sounds great in the car it would have sound great at a school disco it would have sound great on the home uh, hi-fi and it would have sounded great on the radio as well with people back announcing i mean you think about the people they had on radio one at this point you know people like simon bates they would have loved that type of thing absolutely loved it and so for me that's possibly the contender for one of the most 80s songs in their whole repertoire i mean obviously you know other things from other albums from the same period you could go for speechless i suppose because of um, the sampling of France's vocals in the middle. You could go for Red Sky because it kind of has a Dave Edmonds meets ZZ Top vibe going for it. Um, you could kind of go for In Your Eyes because of its production method. Um, but, you know, everybody's going to have a different point of view as to what is the most 80s quo track and um i should ask what do you think what do you think what is your um kind of most 80s the thing that really stands out not just in quo circles but outside of that what really sounds like it comes from the 1980s now i haven't really mentioned anything from obviously the earlier albums when uh, Pete Kircher was in the band because to me they were just kind of carrying on with what had already been and there's little bits in there of the decade but it's not really in my mind until about 86 with the new lineup where they start to experiment with different ideas um, but I've not really mentioned Perfect Remedy either and that is because I think it's just solid rock isn't it um perfect remedy except for a dress book of course and going down for the first time and throw her a line in a thousand years but it's just solid rock isn't it and certainly i i think the most 80s track on that album is probably the way i am simply because of the way that guitar comes in and the mixture and the, and the production it's very much in that mold so i'm going to end this podcast and say thank you for listening tell me what is your um, most 80s quo track which track in their library screams the 1980s let me know <laughs>